Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, we're going to start the construction of a mini tube. It's going to be a small beaker base tube with a wigwag pattern in the bottom of it. So I'm going to start with making the three wigwags that I want. I'm going to make three different sizes, a small one for the middle of the pattern, and then getting bigger as it goes out. You want the biggest section to be on the outside of the pattern because it's going to get stretched out the most. It's going to get stretched to whatever diameter you blow the can out to. So the first one I'm doing here, I'm just pulling down my tubing, getting it ready to go. It's a decent sized chunk of probably 10 mil tubing there. So this will make a pretty good sized ball, which will be the outer ball of my pattern. So there I'm just kind of heating up the small spots, making sure my tubing is the same size all the way through. That way I know that my wigs will be the same size all the way through. So here we go, just starting the process here, wigging it up. This piece is gonna have some wig wags from three separate vac stacks that I did. They all are different, but they all have one side that matches up so that I can make different wig balls and match them up and have my color pattern change um, or, or kind of flow seamlessly throughout the piece. There, just finishing up that one and now I'm just starting to gather it back up slowly heating up chunk by chunk little puff little push together move down and repeat Pretty much through the whole process of gathering up a wig section like this, it's just small, constant corrections. It almost becomes subconscious while you're gathering it up. You're just always oop, tweaking that a little up, oh, moving down, tweaking that a little bit down. Just constant correction until it's all back in a nice ball. There's that one. I like to use my mini torch to start my hole. That way I know it's right where I want it to be, which is basically right in the middle of that half of the pattern. With the mini torch, it just gives me a much better view than holding it in my torch. And one thing to remember, um, is when I'm doing a termination or popping a hole, either one, you don't really want to blast a high oxygen flame on any part where the color might be exposed a little bit. So right on the rim of a hole or right on the tip of a termination, I always try to baby those. They're just switching the axis on that ball, getting it straightened up. And I'm gonna punny up just to make sure my get my weld good on the handle. And I'll put a little bit of heat into it, get it a little more round, and then go to pop my hole. Just heating the very end there. Small flame, a little puff, pop. And then use my mini jacks there to get the right hole size. And then this piece, half, uh, it's a half gray, half fire from the vac stack we did earlier. It's a little bit smaller section. It's like the medium sized section in this pattern. So wigging that up, gathering it back up, getting that ready to go.
I like to put some heat into the reversal ball once it's all gathered up. Work it a bit, get it hot, puff it out. Just get everything a little more even, a little more round before I attach them. You can get in both lips hot, lining up my terminations, and boom. Tag them together, readjust your punny, and then be in control and just bring them together. Don't, you know, just, again, focus on not twisting, just keeping everything straight. Once I have it on there far enough to where I know it's not gonna wander it, then I'll crack my punny off, put some heat into it, puff it out into a nice cylinder section. And then there we go, pop in my hole. To get a nice hole pop, there's a few different factors that you need. One is just that that bubble or that ball or that tube is nice and even. The wall weight has to be even. If there's a thick spot, it's not gonna heat up right and it's not gonna puff out on center. Other thing is your handle has to be straight. As always, really, but especially with popping holes, if you got a wonky handle, it's not spinning true, you're not gonna get a nice on center clean hole. And as well, you have to be heating up the correct amount. Sometimes if you're heating up too much, you're not gonna get a nice clean, accurate pop right where you want it. You're gonna be heating up too much glass, too much is gonna be puffing out, it's gonna pop somewhere other than right on center. And so here I'm doing what's gonna be the middle or the center wig wag of this pattern. And this is a, a pretty small one here. I pulled this tubing down to uh, probably about five mil. And so along with that, just smaller handle, smaller punnies, smaller flames. Other than that, it's basically the same, same concept, same thing, just a little mini. And then just starting to gather it back. You have to be a little more careful with these, obviously. All of your motions are a little smaller. You have to be a little more, a little more accurate. So there's the little mini wig looking pretty crispy there. And again, using my mini to make sure I get that hole right where I want it. If your holes are off, then when you attach them together, your pattern's gonna be off. One side's gonna have more of this color, one side's gonna have less. It's gonna make the wigs wander to one side. There's all sorts of things that can happen. So there, I'm just get, making sure my holes are the same size and heating up lips, attaching and cracking that pony off. That one left a little chunk of clear that's no biggie I can rip that off later and then just lining up my termies putting in some heat you can see I'm kind of bathing it a little further out in the flame there's no need to nuke that and, and, and get it liquid hot you really only want to put in as much heat as you need to so I have the three wig wag sections ready um, I'm, I'm gonna border those with a spiral some, uh, sometimes it can be nice to put a spiral section on the border just because of the evenness and the roundness of how a spiral will blow out. Um, mainly because if there's any thick spots in that tubing or any dense colors or whatever, when you spiral it around itself, you're basically making like a, like a skeleton that just wants to be round. You, um, you, if that makes sense, you're just spirals want to be round because of the memory that that glass already has and the densities of those colors it just makes it blow out nice so it, it will kind of guarantee you, uh, you, you that so it can kind of help you guarantee that the bottom of your can or the disc or the pattern or whatever it is will stay round Here, I'm just cold sealing up to the front of that and ripping off that handle and opening that hole, getting ready to weld that spiral on.
when you do a seal like this, the lips do not need to be molten. Um, they just need to be hot enough to stick together. And you can see there, I, went, I stuck them together, heated up my handle, straightened it out a little bit, and then went back into the weld. Oh, you see that popped off there. And just straighten it out real quick, reattach it, and we're back in business. Just working that all into one nice cylinder section that I can attach to my tube to blow out into the bottom of a beaker. And here I'm just opening up the end of that. Um, my handle on the other side is not hollow. It's just a solid rod. So in order to open it, I need to use the pressure. So in order to open it there, I just used the pressure inside the tube to pop it for me. If that piece is hot and you close it off, it, it will blow out. If that piece is too cold, that's when it vacuums in. So if you just make sure that what you're working on is nice and hot and you close it down carefully, that will pop open. And I'm just flaring that open and it's a little uneven. So I grabbed my cup shears there. Those are one of my favorite tools. They're awesome. And just kind of cleaning up that lip. So here I got a chunk of 50 by five. I recommend using a high quality tube of clear, something that has even wall weight. Oftentimes the Chinese tubing is just not that even, at least it wasn't back in the day when, when I used to use it. But I'm getting myself a good chunk of 50 by five and it's pretty crucial to have nice straight handles on here. I mean, it's always, important to have straight handles, but especially when trying to blow out a nice vessel, take the extra time. You know, if you gotta go back and forth and straighten each one and whatever you gotta do, it's that little stuff that really pays off and helps you out in the end. So here I'm just kind of getting the general shape of the top of my beaker done and removing the excess tubing. It's, uh, it's nice to kind of just simplify what you're, you know, I could have left that on, but it's nice to simplify what you have in your hands, have the correct amount of glass for what you're doing. I really find that that, that tends to help me out. And so once I have that initial taper going, I start back on my on the other side and you know just kind of look at it figure out how much I need there and again remove the excess just get what I need to deal with in my hands Here I got my chunk, I'm just opening it up to the correct size. I'm gonna put a little lip wrap on here. So I pulled a, I don't know, about a one and a half mil or two mil stringer of some Eclipse. You just get a small flame and just a nice gentle twist and just lay it down on there. Give it a little heat and boom, and just attach those. And then it's just a, uh, you know, just a classic be in control, be gentle, be the lathe moment. You only want to put in as much heat as, as you can control. And I'm, it's kind of just gently putting that heat in there. I mean, it doesn't look like it, I guess. It's hard to tell on video, but I'm not just blasting it to get liquid hot. I'm going slow, I'm taking my time making sure everything's happy and even nothing's twisting, nothing's folding, you know, just uh, just being nice to it the whole time, using a big bushy flame, holding it far out in the flame. With a beaker shape like this, I feel the optical quality of the walls is really important. So I really just try to baby it. I don't even touch it with a paddle. I don't want any tool marks in the walls. And that way the pattern that I put on the bottom 
will be nice and clear. There won't be any distortions to it or anything that takes away from the, from the overall look of it. By doing that, it's just getting them super hot and puffing them way out too thin and then trying to bring them back down. Things are only puffed out as far as they need to be. The heat that I'm putting in, I'm really trying to just almost like massage the heat in. I'm not like blasting it. I'm trying to just cover large areas and keep the heat really balanced and really even throughout the piece. And that will give me the heat base that I need for this move here where I'm basically just letting gravity do the work to give me that nice gradual taper. And then that leaves me just a little low spot below my shoulder. So I'm just heating that up, getting a nice gentle heat base into it. And pretty much just one puff will bring up that little valley and, uh, and give me the nice shape that I'm looking for. And then it's just a final heat after I crack that punny off and just bring that shoulder up, bring that pattern down into it a little bit. And, and that's about it. And there's a nice base section for a little mini beaker. Thank you once again for watching part one of the mini tube we're putting together. Stay tuned next time. We're going to make the mouthpiece and a donut section for it.